And right now at three, there he is. Cody Weddle has now returned to the U.S. after being detained in Venezuela. Let's listen in. And several times they actually said, who are the five military generals who you spoke to? And I, I didn't do a story speaking to five military generals, so I don't know where they where they got that information. But evidently, they thought I had done a story speaking to five military generals. Um, so that's what they thought. And you were you were all this time with a ski mask over your face answering these questions. Did you tell them what they wanted to know? Um, I didn't have the information. I mean, I, I didn't have the information of, I did do a story speaking to local officials. I spoke to some military people uh, in exile and also some uh, national police officers, but I didn't have their names. I never took down their names purposely for that, uh, in case this situation were to happen. So I didn't have their names. I couldn't give their names, um, and I wouldn't have given their names anyway. Um, and they weren't in my phone either, so I, I think that was what they were after, uh, but I didn't have that in information anyway. So you have been reporting in Venezuela for four to five years now, and you know I, we watch your reports. They are right down the middle. They are very objective. You now have a front seat to history with this power struggle as, as Maduro tries to keep hold against what is a popular groundswell for uh, Guaido's administration. Do you at any point, have you ever been afraid that Maduro would, or his military would do what they did yesterday? Because they haven't up until now. No, they, I mean, this has never happened. So I didn't have any fear that, uh, you know, that these counterintelligence folks would arrive at my door. They were there at 6.30 in the morning. So I had no, I thought it was the guy who delivers the water every week. Um, so I had no idea this hasn't happened. To my knowledge, it hasn't happened with any other journalists locally or, or, or international journalists. I'd have to check on that. But uh, no, I think this is a this is something we haven't seen and it's definitely definitely worrying. You're not the first journalist to be detained and then released no. and deported. When you were sitting there 12 hours ski mask over your face, characterize what goes through your mind. Were you were you frightened? Were you content? Were you uh, did you trust that nothing terrible was going to happen? Take us through that. Um, basically, I had three three options in my head. I thought either maybe they will let me go and I can stay in Caracas. Maybe they will let me go and I will be deported, which it looks like is what happened. Or maybe I will remain for several months more, or who knows how long in there as some type of political token, um, political pawn. Um, I wasn't aware that uh, people were, were aware. Um, obviously, I think they are. So. Um, Thankfully, yeah, I think the word got out, and I think that really helped. So I'm really, really grateful that that the word got out. And I think, um, you know, politicians, uh, media outlets, local colleagues in Venezuela, everybody was really, uh, you know, took a few moments to to, to to talk about this. And I think it re really, really helped because social media has has gone. You have gone viral on social media in yes, your detention so. as a as an American citizen, as a U.S. citizen working there. Uh, and with the Trump administration taking a very hard line and a very vocal hard line, have you seen attitudes toward you or other American journalists change at all? Uh, not really. I, I mean, I think we're seeing more uh, aggressions against journalists in the streets. Um, this normally happens when a journalist is taking photos or video outside of some type of military building or even the presidential palace, um, areas that us journalists who have been there for a while know that they're uh, technically, legally, you can take photos there, but um, we know that they don't allow that. So that's what we've seen generally is that um, when people are taking photos or outside of these official buildings, they will, they will be grabbed and, and arrested. Um, but this is definitely troubling. I mean, this is the first time we've seen this. And, and we also saw uh, Jorge Ramos a, a week ago, I think. So I think it seems to be incre incrementing. You are from Virginia. Your family, Virginia. Your, your mom talked to some reporters last night. Um, I think anyone who is a mom or dad would say, you're an adult, but boy, you're still my baby boy. Have you talked <laughs> to them? Have you, have. how are they doing? And how, how are you, how did you handle that conversation? No, my poor, poor mother, pobrecita. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, I think she was very, very worried. We're not used to this uh, in Southwest Virginia, so um, yeah, I think she handled it. She she was very active, and she was calling our our local uh, local politicians and and our and our. Uh, news outlets there, so I'm, I, my mom did a great job, and I'm, I'm really sorry to did put her through this. Did you think of them over those 12 hours that you were sitting there? What was there? that? Over, over the 12 hours in detention, I'm sure you thought of them. 
I was thinking about my mother, yes, and that's the only time I teared up a little bit when thinking about what was going through her head because I knew she was so worried. and A lot of people were worried, but I knew my mother, my poor mother, was very worried. What did they tell you? What did they tell you when you were there? Do we have a few questions in Spanish, Cody? Sure, sure. What did they ask when you were there and interrogated? I'm so sorry. Eh, no, me preguntaron, me preguntaron muchas cosas acerca de militares. Querían saber si... All right, you were just listening in. Our Local 10 News reporter Cody Weddle landing hey. safely back in Miami. He is currently at Miami International Airport answering questions from reporters. And he spoke to our Glenna Milberg a short time ago. Yeah.